Hello people, welcome to another um, video. Um, today I'm just going to talk about um, a flying collar rig which has been very effective for me uh, over the years for, for boat fishing. And um, all it is, it's a very straightforward rig. Um, use it when you're sort of drifting over reefs or wrecks and things like that. You just need a boom. You just need a boom like so. You can see that very well. Uh, wire boom, you can make them yourself. This is one I purchased. I think this is a SeaTech one which spins around, which helps against tangling and stuff like that. And you can either fix your lead um, to the bottom of that there, this way up, where the wire's angled up slightly, or you can spin it, spin it round and put on a clip and have it angled down. It doesn't really make a lot of difference, just that this one's got a little clip in there. Okay, you can put a lead on this. Let's just put the lead on. So for, for wreck fishing or reef fishing, out in the open sea, but you need a sort of minimum seven, eight ounce. And sometimes if there's a big tide, you need up to sort of 10 ounce. And the rods you use are generally sort of 12 to 20 pound. So there you go. So you just tie your main line onto that, like braid onto there. Okay, do a good knot, make sure you um, either use some glue with it, because the wire is quite thick there, and that can slip sometimes. So either leave plenty of play or do a double grinner or use some um, braid glue or something like that. So that goes onto there, main line onto there. And then all you do, you attach some amnesia, some clear amnesia, 20 pounds okay. And you want about, how long do you want? Oh, about 12 foot, something like that. I usually go, um, when I'm measuring it out for, for flying collar wreck fishing, I usually go sort of once, twice, and then sometimes a half, like that. So, however long that is, that's quite long. That's about sort of 10, 12 foot, something like that. Um, so yeah, so that's amne Sunset Amnesia. It's quite cheap, good value. Um, ideal for leaders and traces, memory free. Okay, so it sort of handles all the shock. Because when, you, when you're fishing for like cold or pollock or cool fish, especially with pollock and cool fish, you get a, um, a real, the, the first take is quite um, quite full on. Now, that's when your tackle has tested the the opening and exchange is cold, a more a bit more dopier, but they sort of um, more heavier fuds and just stay on the, and don't move around too much. Um, you've got more of a risk of them getting tangled in the wreck because they're hard to get off the bottom. Um, but with um, pollock and cool fish, you've got to have your drag set just right. So that gets tied onto here. And you just, you know, it's fairly long. Then all you do, all you do, you tie on these sort of things. Ow, bloody sharp they are. I've got some, um, these are Redgill Evos 178 there. So the hook comes with it. All right, and you just retrieve them. Very sort of relaxed retrieve. Lower it down to the seabed. Skipper will tell you when to sort of wind up or when to lower it, sorry and um, you get different colours, cod like these sort of brighter colours and pollock and bass even would like, would like that, something like that. You can get bass on deep water wrecks as well, well fairly deep water wrecks. That's a red gill 115 I think, so that's the intermediate one. And that's more of a traditional sort of red gill where you, you know, you buy your hooks, thread your line through the nose, pull the line out and then Put your hook through the bottom like that. That's all we ever used to use, things like that. And you see from those um, photos I've got on some previous trips and the fish I've sort of caught using this, this technique. So it's very effective. You can also introduce these Savage Gear, sort of a lead, light lead head. These are about 40 gram or 30 gram. And it's got like a cool fish sort of body on it. And cod love them. Cool fish pollock. You know, you could even fluke out a ling or a conger on it as well. You know, you'd be surprised what turns up. And even John Dory's or um, monkfish, and even even turbot around a wreck. So you know, you can. There's all sorts down there. This is another slightly different colour of the 178 Evo there. They're about 17 gram. So that's um, that's that, and we got a. Um, these are the sort of hooks you need. Sort of cox and rule, do some um, uptight extra. Very sort of strong hook. 
I mean, if you're getting like a double figure pollock or double figure cool fish, cod, it's actually quite a lot of strain on your gear. You can up your amnesia to sort of 25 pound, 30 pound if you're worried about that. But if you take it easy, you've got your drag set right, 20 should be enough. And also if you're out there when it's rough, you've got the swell of the ocean as well. So sometimes, you know, it's, um, the retrieve is a, is a bit of a game as well, how, what to do for that, but I'll just talk you through a bit of that. So this is a, um, this is like the reel you're gonna need for that kind of wreck fish. And this is an um, Abu Ambassador 7,500. CS Elite, high speed. It's got a level wind on at this one. So it guides it for Right, sorry about that, Amazon Prime. So, the braid you're gonna need, that's minimum 20 pound for that, but modern day braids, you can get like 30, 50 pound in a, in a real thin diameter, you know, compared to what we used to use for mono years ago, we used to all use mono in like the early 90s. But there you are, what you do when you when you have this rig set up, you want your drag set just right so when you do get a take, a big pollock, he will just dive, it'll just go, and your gears will snap if it's not if it's not set right. So just keeping your heads up there. Do with a little bit of oil on this. It's got a nice level wind on it, so you ain't got to worry about guiding the line on with your thumb. I actually don't mind doing that, but that's nice to have a level wind because then you can just sort of have a nat with your mate while you're winding in. So this is a rod, um, this is not actually mine, this is my father's rod, which he brought a few years ago, it's actually a very, very good rod for this, it's a 12 to 20 pound lines, 100 gram to 300 gram light it's called, it's got some lovely fittings on here, lovely sort of um, guides, um, this is actually by Century. This is called a Century Excalibur Braid. I don't know if you can see that very well on there. Century Excalibur Braid. That's about seven or eight foot, I think. And it's light. Century do some fantastic rolls. God knows how much he's paid for this. Um, the Oakley Stick brand of rods for this sort of fish in the 12 to 20, eight foot, is um, really good value really good value. So what you do, you just buy it in, just put the old 7500 on, tighten it up, probably be right with a 10 ounce lead on this at the most, but you ideally want to get as light as you can, 6 or 7 ounce, if the tide will let you. And all you do, that gear, you know, the skipper, the skipper will just say, why are you go? And all you do, you just you just lower it. Look down at the bottom where the wreck is, click it in gear like this. And I find when I'm doing it, just a very relaxed retrieve. About this short speed. And just wait for the hit. And the fish would you know be just above the wreck or mid-water. Cool fish are usually a bit higher up, but your cod will usually take in, you know, quite tight to the bottom if they're in the mood and you'll get them on this sort of thing get them on these sort of evo things just like that and um, the UK chart boat scene is really good value you can go as an individual you can just rock up rent up the night before whatever get yourself a space reasonably priced okay when you, when you go there's a lot of people on board and get a lot of tangles and stuff but it's still good value you can still get, get, get some nice fish um, so I definitely recommend going on the, um, it's either the deepsea.co.uk char boats or it's char boats UK online. They advertise all individual spaces and things like that. So, you know, Weymouth is a good port. Dartmouth, um, Pool, I've got a few boats. 
Brighton used to have a few boats. That's the same for the South Coast. Um, failing that, Whitby. Whitby's got a few. Who else is there? Um, all around, there's, there's boats everywhere, Wales, Bristol, Bristol's got some good fishing in there. Not so much for wreck fishing, although I was saying that, they probably have got some good wrecks in there, but if you want to go wreck fishing, I recommend something like Dartmouth or um, Weymouth. And um, if you can book yourself on a Channel Island trip, even better, because there's some really good, they can in introduce this style of fishing with um, bait fishing for like congas and, um, and bank fishing for flatfish different species of flatfish, but that's, a, that's another chapter. So anyway, that's the flying collar rig. I hope I haven't bored you too much to death. It's a very straightforward method, but it's, um, if you go with the right skippers and you go for sort of some distant wrecks, that is all you need. And you can get some double figure, cod and pollock, one after the other if you luck's in. So yeah, okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, like I say, that's just the, you know, that's just a straightforward sort of flying collar rig. You can make these yourselves. You can just buy some wire, a pair of pliers, and you can twist them round, twist them round. I find they don't, you know, you have a swivel, you have things to spin like this so you don't get tangles and stuff, but I find with just not even having that, I find it, you know, you can actually put, when, you, when you're doing your own one, you can put, build your swivels inside it and at the top, and then that does that has that effect, so you're not going to get the tangles because you've got swivels. Right. Okay, then, guys. There you go. Um, any questions? Just drop us a message. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Bye. See you later. <laughs>